For the comparison video today, I've started with my original ecological footprint of 3.7 Earths, which is what we calculated in our last video. Last time, you may recall that the biggest factor impacting my footprint was shelter. This includes the size of your house, what materials it's made of, if you have access to running water, and how many people live in it. We can also see that my mobility is quite high. This covers how far you travel, the type of transportation you use, and how energy efficient it is. When we move over to services, uh, we can see that I was doing relatively well here and that primarily looked at energy usage in the form of electricity and how efficient it was. Then we can move on to food and food is, well, it's food. Uh, what we eat, everything it takes to grow or rear that food, if the food is packaged, processed and how far it travels. Finally, we come to goods, which covers off on all the other stuff you buy as well as how you dispose of the associated wastes. To see how things could change here, I went back onto the Global Footprint Network's Ecological Footprint Calculator and gave the exact same answers as last time, except every time I ran the calculations, I changed one single answer so I could then see the impact of that factor. Now, let's have a look and see what I found. For housing, I found that the size of my house had the most impact on my footprint. I could save 0.9 of an earth by halving the size of the house I live in. I could also lessen my impact by living in an apartment um, that's exactly the same size as my current house. It would be a very large apartment, but that doesn't make too much of a difference, only 0.1 of an earth. And it turns out it doesn't matter whether I live in a house or made out of brick or adobe, which is also known as mud brick. It has the exact same impact. You can see here that both of these scenarios have 3.7 Earths if everyone lived exactly like me. For goods and services, my footprint drops by 0 0.3 of an Earth if I live in the most energy efficient house possible. Compared to what I uh, live as now, it would increase by 0.2 of an earth if I constantly replace my phone, laptop, television, etc., etc., with the latest versions. And it increases even more if I didn't use any renewable energy or carbon offsetting. So this one here, it's quite nice to see that I'm doing something right by doing my carbon offsetting and using renewable energy. For food, I compared going vegan, your classic carrot, with eating meat just a few times a week alongside uh, my usual eggs and dairy almost daily, which I do as a vegetarian at the moment. It's pretty clear to see that there's a dramatic jump of a whole earth 3.7 to 4.7 if I started eating meat just three to four times a week. From this, we can see just how impactful your diet really could be on your own ecological footprints. Lastly, I played around with a few different transportation scenarios, but I settled on showing you this one. In our original calculations, I estimated that on average, I've flown 20 hours per year over the last 10 years. This new scenario on the left is if I didn't fly at all. From this, we can see how dramatically a short amount of time my 20 hours each year can dramatically change your ecological footprint. Maybe I'll start taking trains more instead of flying, or I'll put money towards carbon offsetting so that I can minimize the impact that this part of my lifestyle has on my overall footprint. In summary, of the scenarios that I've shown you, the scenario that lowered my ecological footprint the most was downsizing my house um, to one that's half the size what I currently live in. And the scenario that increased my footprint the most was starting to eat meat a few times a week. Now, it's time for you to think about what changes your individual footprint. But as I said at the start of this video, our ecological footprint is also something that's bigger than us as individuals. The Global Footprint Network has outlined five key areas that could help reduce humanity's ecological footprint, as well as how you can get involved. These areas are our smart, sustainable urban planning, renewable energy, 
minimizing food waste and changing our diets, minimizing or even reversing population growth by having fewer children um, or possibly supporting women's education and their rights and access to family planning, and then protecting and regenerating nature. If you're interested in any of these topics that I've just quickly, quickly covered off, take, take a look at the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals to learn more. Now, are you going to change your ecological footprint? If so, how? Happy investigating.